Okay guys, so I've got a banger for you in this video. We are reviewing the WBC World Super Flyweight title defense between Srisaket Sorong Visay from Thailand and Juan Francisco Estrada from Mexico. After beating Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez twice, Sorong Visay became the Super Flyweight champion and fought Juan Francisco Estrada next. Okay guys, thoughts and opinions at the end. Let's get straight into the action. I gave you both instructions. I want to remind you, listen and please follow my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Thank, tell him these trunks are high. I'm going to let the action work in here. Estrada, yours are right at the belt line. I'm going to let it work in here as well. Again, good luck. Fight hard, fight clean. Go back to your corners. Thanks, Mike. This era in this tiny weight neighborhood is being defined by fights like this, by this fight tonight. Much as a previous era in a different weight class, also a small one with Morales and Barrera and Juan Manuel Marquez were defined by the fights you saw among those, among that group. Chocolatito, now Soren Visay has entered into it. Estrada, these fights, this fight tonight, will go a long way toward defining this era at Superfly. And Andre Ward, as the fight begins, I come back to that three or four pound weight advantage, unofficially, that Soren Visay apparently enjoys in the ring. That could be significant because he is a come forward tank. It could be, but it also could work against him. If he took the weight off too fast, sometimes the body will crash the weight back on. It'll give it to you just like you took it off. So we got to let the fight unfold to see what type of extra weight that is. But visibly, so on B side is clearly the bigger fighter. Stronger upper body, for sure. Bigger legs as well. Estrada is a classic stylist. He's been waiting for this moment. Has, to, has had to fight a who's who of the weight neighborhood to get back here after losing a very close fight to Chocolatito. Chocolatito's most significant win of his career. Soren Visay giving Chocolatito obviously his most significant loss, his only losses. Estrada's been waiting to prove that he's not just among the best, but that he is the best. And both guys have landed some clean shots in the early going. But Estrada knows. He told us in the fighters meeting, I'm not the stronger guy. Sorum Visay is probably more powerful than me. He said, but I've fought tough guys who can hit before. I know what I need to do. And so far, he's given a good account of himself. When you look at the four losses on Sri Sketsorong Visai's record, it's very important to remember that two of those losses came in his first two professional fights. And talk about being thrown to the wolves. In his very first professional fight, he fought, he fought the Japanese fighter Akira Yaigaki, who was one of the best fighters in the division at that time. Unreal. Hard left hand by Sorong Visai. Estrada took it well. There is a sense with Sorong Visai, he still has something to prove. Most feel he lost the first fight against Chocolatito. He was given a decision. And even in the knockout win against Chocolatito, there was a feeling heading into the fight that Chocolatito may have been a shot fighter. Or may have gone up too far in weight. That 115 pounds was simply too big for Chocolatito, who had been dominant at 108 and 112. Good straight right from Estrada. Crowd loves that. Decision. You can feel that it's an Estrada crowd. But the way Soren Visay knocked out Chocolatito made a statement. It was a, he's a scary kind of power puncher. But even when you're on top, Max, you know, it's always something to prove. In this sport, you're only as good as your last fight anyway. Good, quick left-hand counterpunch there by Estrada as Soren Visay was rushing after hearing the 10-second clap. And there's the bell. Andre, I'm always delighted to see Jack Reese in the ring. To me, he's a very smart no-nonsense referee. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, he's ref several of my fights. Um, he's uh, no-nonsense, like you said, and he's going to make you abide by the rules. He also thinks a lot about refereeing, takes the job very seriously. As he should. Stop. 
One thing I took away from the fighter meeting with Estrada is he gave Sorum Visai his credit. Sometimes fighters, as a defense mechanism, they'll try to shield themselves from the strengths of their opponent to make themselves feel better. Estrada's a veteran. He knows I have to acknowledge what Sorum Visai does well so I can prepare physically but also psychologically. So right now he looks like he knows Sorum Visai is the more powerful guy. He knows about the big left hand, but he's doing what he has to do to negate the power of Soren Visai at the moment. Yes, it seems to me Estrada has been outboxing Soren Visai so far. Usually pressure fighters take a few rounds to start really cooking. And Soren Visai is a pressure fighter. The question is, if and when he starts cooking, how does Estrada react to those power shots? Interpreter Jerry Olayo has just let us know that between rounds one and two, and this is interesting, Andre, in terms of the notion of downplaying what the other guy can do, and you were giving Estrada credit for saying, you know, that he understands who Soren Visai is. Between rounds one and two, Estrada said to the people in his corner, this guy definitely has big time power. Yeah, but if we didn't hear that, we wouldn't be able to tell from Estrada's body language that he felt that. That's right. That's what being a veteran fighter is all about in a championship fight. You don't show your weaknesses. You don't show the way you actually really feel. And when a fighter is going up against an opponent with big-time power, if he fights like he's scared in boxing, that's called being a scary fighter. If he fights as a scary fighter, the irony is he's more likely to get hit with big shots. Estrada is fighting with courage, and therefore his defense is likely no to be better than if he was overly concerned with it. You know, heighten his senses the way they're supposed to. Not Jack Reese rules with a trip and gets him back into action in a hurry. Great right hand by Estrada. And another great right hand by Estrada. And the third. Precision, Jim. Precision. It's not the hard shot. It's the accurate shot. That was an excellent round for Juan Francisco Estrada. Is a fearsome puncher who is putting on quite a show at this point in light heavyweight fight. And I love that matchup because Sullivan Guerrero will find out about Bivol. Bivol will have to answer some of the questions we have about any prospect. And if he doesn't have to, that will speak to just how devastating a fighter he is. If you have any boxing skill deficiency, Sullivan Barrera will find it. He couldn't beat Andre Ward. But he looks like he can beat just about anybody, uh, anybody else. Couldn't win a round from Andre, as it turns out. That, that win's looking better and better for you, Andre. It is, but Barrera's the real deal. He, he's a very, very crafty fighter, experienced fighter, Cuban background. He's the real deal. Any questions we have about Bivol will be answered in that fight against Sullivan Barrera next week. Three of a scheduled 12. Teresa Ketsorum Visai in the yellow with red trim. Juan Francisco Estrada in the black with gold. So far, Estrada, who came in as a favorite, actually, you could see why. Because on paper, Soren Visai's style plays into Estrada's counters. But because Estrada is not impossible to hit, and Soren Visai is such a powerful puncher and body destroyer. It really is, as I mentioned off the top, Jim, a pick em kind of fight, and now we're seeing Soren Visai start to really unload with some shots. Well, uh, there are some interesting CompuBox statistics regarding Soren Visai. In terms of numbers, he is the most body punch centric fighter in the sport, and he's the most power punch centric fighter in the sport. He is coming to take your body. And, and to the and craft, no secret about it. exactly, but due to the craft of Estrada, he's not able to get those same body shots off tonight. Estrada's taking his punch count down just a little bit. And inviting him to throw upstairs rather than downstairs, I mean, the which question, is not his game. So far in this fight, I would rather be Estrada in each of the rounds. And if you look at what Estrada's doing, he's not overcommitting, leaving himself open for the big shots of Solon Visai, even though he got hit with a few punches there. 
Estrada's touching to the body, but he's staying in range. He'll turn a left hook over if so on v side over commits, and he'll stick a jab out where need be, but he's not over committing. It's too early in the fight for that. And Max, at this moment in this round, I'm not certain that at the end of the round, I'm going to want to be Estrada. I agree. I think so on v side turned the tide, as I said that, Jim, and has landed some shots that you could see have concerned Estrada. But the concern will always be there because this man has bricks in both hands, but we got to see Sorong Visai show something else. But he's starting to loosen his hands. He's starting to let them go. And just by doing that, Andre, he's having much greater success. He is, but Estrada's answering. I'll tell you what. I don't care how great a boxer you are, and Estrada is a great boxer. You're going to fight Sri Saket Sorong Visai. You'd better be ready to fight. By my lights, the most uh, skillful and creative counterpuncher in the last 20 years, Juan Manuel Marquez. I agree with that. Amazing counterpunching skills. We enter round four of a scheduled 12. Harold Letterman, our unofficial ringside scorer, as always. How do you have the first three, Harold? Okay, Jim. I got a two rounds to one. 29, 28. Uh, Srisiket saw Rungvisai. Uh, you know, Jim, I just think that saw Rungvisai is the harder hitter, and I think he's doing more damage. But uh, in round two, certainly Juan Francisco Estrada won that round. He, he, he boxed really well, and, and saw Rungvisai didn't get him as often. But saw Rungvisai had a good round in the first, and I thought he had a decent round in the third, but this is a very, very close fight. Two rounds to one, Srisiket saw Rungvisai. I agree with Harold, except I flipped the first round, and I think Estrada's up 2-1. to one. Hey, this is the same as in the last fight. We've got a very close fight. Intelligent judges with great backgrounds could easily score the rounds differently, and there'll be a strong argument either way. So run to side, the way he calmly comes in and just throws those bombs and acts as though the counters don't bother him is the classic power-punching pressure fighter. Estrada's calmness and experience will serve him well in this fight, I think. He could knock Rocky Marciano's nose off his face, and he would act as though it didn't bother him at all. Marciano's who I have in mind when I say that. And Estrada's a guy who likes to step on the gas in the second half of a fight. He likes to establish himself in the first half, and then he starts to pick it up down the stretch. But we mentioned that CompuBox statistical definition by which Soren Bisai was the most body punch centric fighter in the sport, and that is changing before your very eyes. And you've already pointed out, Andre, that Estrada is doing things to make sure that he can't land as many body punches as he has in previous fights, and it's working. He's landing three and a half body punches per round compared to 9.1 per round in his last seven fights coming in. So that's a big change to which Soren Visai is going to have to adjust. Soren Visai is fighting like he knows he has the power, the punching power to change the fight in a moment. But Estrada right now is getting his as well. And he's also looking at shots that he's not taking right now that he wants to take as the fight progresses. And he's been doing that all fight, I think. But Soren Visai in the last head. couple of rounds, just by being more active, has tightened it up. No doubt. No doubt. Good counter from Estrada right there. Ten seconds to go in round number four. Big right hand. Isai comes on, lands a hard left hand, lands another hard left hand, and takes one shot from Estrada. But that was a big rally at the end of the round for Suiza gets four on Isai. It was like a swivel head, more like. In round four, Rung Visai landed a fight high, six body shots. Getting there, slowly but surely. Crowd is a little quieter now. You know, another thing Sor Sorun Visai has done in this fight is by not attacking with reckless abandon, he hasn't added to the power on Estrada's counters. He's not running into counters. And that's, well, there he did. It looked like a clean punch, but also a slight push. And Jack Reese sees the push and rules it not a knockdown. Crowd doesn't like it. They would love for Estrada to get a knockdown point at some point. Soren Bisai reacts as though he's getting up from a knockdown. 
But you see why running into the shot is twice as devastating. It's like a home run hitter facing a fastball pitcher. The harder it comes in, the faster it goes out. And Sorung Visai, when he attacks with more reckless abandon, gives Estrada greater power-punching, counter-punching opportunities. And you can tell that that's Estrada's game plan. Like, he wants Sorung Visai to overcommit and run into one of his shots so he can do damage uh, and ultimately get Sorung Visai's attention. And that's a way in which Sorung Visai has uh, progressed as a fighter as opposed to early in his career. He takes little half-steps back. He, he disrupts the rhythm of the counter puncher. He doesn't simply run forward. And, and you see that. You can see so on V side thinking. He has a game plan. To the to the naked eye, it may not seem like it. It may seem like he's a straightforward, all power guy, but he is thinking, and he knows Estrada is a crafty, crafty fighter. He's discovered that if he feints to the body or throws the right hand to the body, he might get a free shot upstairs with the left hand. Or when he takes that little half step back, the counter puncher is a little afraid to counter because if he extends himself, not only does he waste the energy of the shot, but he leaves himself open to Soren Visai's attack. Look at the size of Soren Visai's calves. I mean, that's almost unnatural for a 115-pound fighter. Yeah, I'd pay big money to have those calves. <laughs> Good straight left hand to the body by Soren Nice Visai. straight left hand. Hard oh, yeah. left hand shot upstairs. Affected Estrada. And essentially, he's landing that because he's basically aiming it at the chest, center mass. And he can adjust last second where he wants to take it, upstairs or down, based on the defense. And even if, you, even if you're taking a puncher's another slip Pull or a down. push from Estrada. Right, calm down. Come even if you're taking a puncher's punches well, the problem is they're still draining you, whether they're to the head or to the body. They're going to fill, fill, fill them in the latter part of the fight. Good Hard straight right. hands by both fighters. Absolutely. Boy, there have been some real good shots upstairs exchanged toward the end of that nice round. round. Very effective, brilliant referee. Round six of a scheduled 12. The power puncher here at Sorong Visai has an advantage that almost seems unfair. Estrada has to work harder to get the same effect. He can counter once or twice, hit Sorong Visai just right, and Sorong Visai lands one shot and seems to negate the work. And you begin to get the impression that Estrada needs to find another tactical answer, another way to keep Sorong Visai off balance. In the last round, it was becoming a walk-forward sledgehammer affair for Sorong Visai. Good right-hand body shots by Sorong Visai. Very calmly thrown to the body. That good little rhythm disruptor is another subtle difference in Sarung Visai's game now compared to a few years ago, Andre. He throws change of pace shots, not everything with full force. He's definitely thinking in there. Showing more wrinkles in his game. A softer straight left hand that lands and disrupts the strata without looking for the knockout on that shot. Even though this is against conventional wisdom, if Estrada wants to have success against a puncher like this, he's going to have to get closer. You don't run from the power. And I'm not saying Estrada's running, but you don't stay away from it. You actually go to it, and you get mid-range and in close. Estrada has a great inside game, but he's got to be willing to bite down on his mouth guard and get in there if he's going to have some more success. Because where he's where he's playing right now, it's dangerous ground with a guy like Soren Visai. At the end of Soren Visai's power, you mean? Absolutely. Ever since the move to weigh-ins the day before the fight, more than 30 years ago, weights in boxing have now become so deceptive. We call this super flop. They weighed in under 115 pounds. But tonight, in reality, in the ring, Soren Visai is a hard-punching junior lightweight. And Estrada is a skilled boxing featherweight. Super duper fly. Yeah. You mentioned Sarang Visai thinking, Andre. He is thinking step for step with a thinking man's fighter, which for a power puncher is very encouraging. Yeah, it's impressive. It's impressive. I didn't think he would show this much nuance tonight 
Uh, even though I would like to see Soren Visai use his right jab a lot more. The left hand that he's looking for, he can get it if he blinds Estrada with the jab. But again, that's a lost art in the sport. Everybody wants to be the two-fisted attacker, and they don't want to use the jab. That said, he just outboxed Estrada for about a 30-second stretch in the middle of the ring. He did. And I see a faint hint of discouragement in the face and the body language of Juan Francisco Estrada, who is trying to function against a bigger, stronger man. Let's not forget, Estrada lost the first half of the Cuadras fight, too before storming back to win. Great point. That's who he is. He's a back half of the 12 rounds uh, type fighter. He right. To close the show. He's not a front runner. He's a thoroughbred. Still think he might have to find the tactical answer. A little something different to change what he's doing. Very difficult if you allow Soren Bisai to get into a rhythm and a pattern. Yeah, but you know, that pattern is a, is a, very impressive so far. He's baiting Estrada into leading at times and actually being the counterpuncher. Good left hook from Estrada. Even the timing just there on that soft one, too. Soren Visai took the half step back. Estrada led. And then once he was a slightly off balance, Soren Visai threw a quick one, too. thinking like we've been saying you see him look low and shoot the overhand left high that, that's a thinking man's game he's not just trying to kick the door down he's checking the back door he's checking the windows he's checking the side door he's trying to find different ways to get in main thing is he's coming to rob your house but I still say if Sorong V side picks up the jabs and I don't want to say pick up because I don't think he's used it at all tonight but if he starts to use the jab those big shots, namely the left hand that he's looking for, he'll get that. But he's got to start with the jab. Meantime, what does Estrada have to do, Andre? He hasn't committed any great sins that I can see, and yet he seems to be losing. I think the sin that, that Estrada's committing is he's content with where the fight is. He hasn't been knocked down. I'm sure he's been buzzed several times, and he doesn't want to get knocked out. He has to get mid-range and in close. He has to challenge the power of Solon v side in a smart way. It was more of a slapping kind of shot, One and yet zone. it landed with more authority. He's simply heavier-handed. He has thudding power. He has unusual thudding power. How else could you reverse your career the way he did? Left Muay Thai behind, moved from Thailand to Japan, got thrown to the Wolves, was knocked out in his first two fights, and more or less came up under the radar. How many people would have paid attention when he had three losses and a draw in his first five fights? But from there on, it was a steamroller. Lost to Carlos Cuadras in a fight that was stopped because of a cut that was created by a butt on Cuadras. And then came in, got a highly uh, controversial decision over Chocolatito. Oh. His best punch in a while. Estrada boxing more sharply this round, period. And Andre, to your point, seems to be getting a little closer with the range. And beating Soren B side of the punch. Taking over the role of the attacker. Estrada has to get closer if he's going to find success. He's listening in this fight. to his trainer. You heard the big speech from the trainer between rounds. Estrada has paid attention. 
It's the difference between okay? being a yeah, back foot good. fighter, as they say in boxing, and yeah, being an aggressive counterpuncher. Zoran b -side doesn't care whether that was an official knockdown or not. He wanted Estrada to taste the gap. Yeah. People don't realize that if you get pushed down, if you slip, it takes so much energy just to get yourself back up. So even though it wasn't a punch, <laughs> that's a point for Sorun B side Absolutely. in terms of just he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nuances of the fight. He knew fight. that Estrada was changing the fight, had made a tactical adjustment that was putting him on the defensive. He said, hey, go down. Let me put you on pause for just a second. And nevertheless, it's a very good round for Estrada, and it's coming just in time. Still is. Getting closer. Yes. Still is. First round he's won in a while. And then he's going to have to take, and the risk here is that Soren Visai can unload a fight-ending shot at this range. At any the moment, risk he's going to have to take. If that's the any moment that I have to take, you're exactly right now. Stakes go up as Estrada decides that he's going to try to win the fight. Oh, big shot from Soren Visai. Taking well from Estrada. Puncher also has the advantage in terms of scoring. Because when the guy with a reputation as the lighter puncher lands really vicious shots, sometimes the judges don't give him the same kind of credit as when the puncher answers back one or once or twice, even if he's been out punched. And then what happens psychologically to the puncher when he lands his best shot, and you look at him and you hit him back? That's what Estrada is finding out in this round. Good, nice, short body shot from Estrada right there. Counter right and left hook. Real good round from Estrada, competitive, but a good one for him, and he needed it. From Estrada, and another big left from Sorun Visai. This is a battle in a brawl tonight. In round eight, Estrada landed a fight high, 14 power shots, biggest number for him. You saw the tactical adjustment, you saw him coming forward, you saw him getting closer to Sorun Visai, you saw him taking risks. Sorun Visai has not gotten him on the ropes where you figured he'd want a guy like Estrada. But he's done very good work in the middle of the ring. Sorung Visai in the early rounds tried, but if you watch, Estrada gave him lateral movement. He kept the puncher moving and kept his feet unstable, so Sorung Visai didn't feel comfortable in that type of setting. for the first time gave me a sense that Soren B-side may be tiring a little bit. Remember what George Foreman used to say about a tired puncher, Jim? Sometimes that's when he's at his most dangerous. There's no doubt that Estrada has to be alert for this whole fight. I don't care what so how, how tired Soren B-side looks. That's just the name of the game when you're fighting a guy who has bricks in his gloves like Soren B-side. But Estrada has to keep closing the distance. He has to keep working the body and, and getting in close to Soren Visa if he's going to continue to experience success. You mentioned Marco Antonio Barrera earlier, Max. Remember how in every one of the three Barrera Morales fights, one guy landed, the other guy was desperate to land back immediately. These two guys are competing exactly the same way. Yes, not with the same intensity, but with the same idea, I agree. And it's not the Sorong Visai boxes like Barrera, but as his career has progressed, he's become a championship fighter because he's added nuance to his game, as we've been mentioning. Anytime you fight a puncher, there's silent agreements that you have to make with yourself from round to round that nobody else knows about but you, you and you. Do I want to take this risk? Is it worth it? What if he lands a shot? Can I get knocked out cold? You got to find and summon the strength and the wherewithal to get your stuff off, meaning your offense, the way you need to to put yourself in a position to win. Well, Estrada apparently has done just that because th just then over the last 30 seconds, he started to really box Sorum Visai's ears off. Okay. I like that. And a you don't run that guy in front of him. So the opportunity may be there to outbox him. He's, he's landing, which often happens with a very skillful boxer against a puncher. In this case, Estrada being the skillful boxer. By the middle of the fight, he starts to land head snapping shots. He's doing it now. Round 10 of a scheduled 12. Teresa gets all run B-side, the southpaw. 
against Juan Francisco Estrada, the conventional fighting boxer puncher stylist. Harold, how do you have it through nine? How could you? I got it six rounds to three, 87, 84. Swissy can't score on the side. Jim, I thought that the, uh, Juan Francisco Estrada had two good rounds in rounds eight and nine to make this fight a little bit closer. But I thought all the early rounds basically went to Sora side because he was the harder hitter, and, and Juan Francisco Estrada wanted to trade with him in the middle of the round. So anyway, it's getting a little bit closer. I got it six rounds to three. Swiss against Sora Rungvisai. And I guess, Max, what you would say is that you believe the seventh round was uh, I the first know. round I gave to Estrada. I have it five yeah. rounds to four, Sora side. So a slight difference there. But a critical difference as we come to round 10. Estrada keeps showing Soren Visa the straight right, but the shot that he re really wants is the left hook. And Estrada's boxed well this round again. Andre, he did exactly what you prescribed. He stepped into Soren Visa's range, but apparently was his range, and took the fight to him, more aggressively applying his counterpunching skills. Soren Visa I threw need, a couple I of straight left hands to the body. Now goes back upstairs. Estrada countering once again, as he did through most of the early portions of the fight. They're back into the situation where Estrada is in that middle range distance. He's not all the way back. He's there to be hit, but he's there to try to do damage himself. Very subtle difference, Jim, but I think you're exactly right, and that's why, as Andre pointed out, Sarong Visai is, is having success at that range. And you take a risk when you decide to fight a puncher like Swiss Kit Sarong Visai in the middle range rather than to stand back in a boxing only position. You can't beat a puncher if you don't take risks. You don't get reckless, but you take calculated risk at the right time, at the right range. This could be a really a pivotal round in this fight. It's competitive, so Rung Visai's done much better than he's done in recent rounds. And Estrada, who seemed to turn the momentum of this fight, would probably be well served to rally here in the last 30 seconds. And it's a power boxing round, again. Estrada is standing close enough to try to do damage. Soren Visai is taking advantage of the opportunity to make contact to try to box in such an effective way that he can put the rounds away. You know, uh, sorry, Soren Visai's face is starting to show the effects of Estrada's power shots. His eyes are puffy. When he gets hit, his head is rattling a little bit more. Oh, big right hand. Huge right hand, hand by Soren Visai. Now he's definitely got upside. Round 11 of a schedule 12. There was no knockdown in round 10. That's what happened in the Quadras fight last year. So now Estrada sets himself up once again within Sorum Visai's punching range. And you see that Harold Letterman on his Chewy. unofficial card Chewy. stretched the lead back out for Suiza against Sorum Visai yeah, yeah, in the 10th round, giving him the round. Probably if we asked Harold, he'd say, hey, did you see that giant left hand at the end of the round? That made the difference. Could have easily, I mean, I thought Soren Visai probably won that round anyway. Yeah, it was a big shot, too. So Soren Visai is kind of standing in the middle of the ring and saying, come and get me. And Estrada has no choice at this point other than to try to come and get him. And that makes for action in the last two rounds. That's really been Soren Visai's strategy after the second round, Jim, to kind of bait Estrada into leading at times when it's uncomfortable for him and becoming the counterpuncher himself, Soren Visai. In order to put yourself in that position, you got to win some early rounds. And Sarisa Ketz, Soren Visai was confident enough to believe that he had, whether he had or not, and he's been able to exploit this throughout the fight. I think what Estrada and Nietes showed us tonight Good shot from Solon Visa. Down the middle. Is that you can be a boxer, you can be crafty, and you can still be extremely tough. The two are not mutually exclusive. You don't have to be reckless and wild uh, and, and call yourself, you know, tough. You can also box and, and use craft and set things up and be as tough as they come. Hey, we've been watching it for years. They call them Mexican stars. Well, that, that's the, the highest level of toughness in boxing because it requires not only courage to take shots and exchanges, but the mental discipline 
not just to lose your composure and start winging it and start playing to the crowd. And that's really the toughest kind of fighter, Andre. You were the best example for a while in the sport. Well, those are the guys that you see last a long time in the sport. Hard left hand by Soren Bisai. Another combination from Soren Bisai. Strata, I think, is going to have to come up with something dramatic here. Yeah, he's Be searching for an answer. Because I have Soren Bisai already with six rounds won. And Harold has him with seven. Good right hand. But that was set up from two good shots to the body. Okay, both uh, both your scorecard, Max, Good and right hand. scorecard are unofficial. And Soren Bisai goes back in. Seeking to get closer and get hit with a straight right hand. And the clock arrives at midnight on the East Coast, 9 o'clock on the West Coast. And we arrive at the witching hour in every boxing match. Round 12 of a schedule 12. A close fight, or so it would appear, between Sri Saket Solon Bisai and Juan Francisco Estrada for a world premise at 115 pounds. If either fighter has the edge, it would probably be the more powerful Solon Bisai, who has been firing sledgehammer shots standing in the middle of the ring throughout the fight. But Juan Francisco Estrada has never stopped trying to counter him and has worked hard to try to create opportunities over the past few rounds, particularly in the second half of the fight. Anything could happen on official scorecards as we come down the stretch. Largely Mexican or Mexican-American crowd in the forum rooting for Juan Francisco Estrada. You know, I know it doesn't work like this, Jim, but as we're seeing, Sorun Visay as the guy in the lead because of his big power, if you just look at their faces, it tells the story that Estrada has landed the more effective punches. This is a close fight. Hard right hand by Estrada. Sharon B-side feels the need to answer back right away. Gets in a hard right hand and a left. Sharon B-side landing there. Estrada firing again with the right hand. Looking for one more big shot. Crowd rising. Folks, we could see a 12th round knockout here because they are throwing bombs. A minute and a half to go. Both fighters selling out in the center of the ring. Tremendous action. Crowd on its feet now. Cheering for Estrada. Soren Visai seems wobbled by the clean shots he's been hit with here. But firing back himself. And said Estrada would need something dramatic. This is pretty dramatic. Is it dramatic enough? The only problem with that, Max, is Soran Visay is hanging right there with him. Yeah, well, he's hanging there, and he's landing big bombs, but he's the worst for the wear this round. I agree with that. said in the beginning neither fighter does a lot of talking in the beginning you know before the fight but when they get in the ring they lay it all on the line and both fighters are doing that here tonight who's the best super flyweight in the world 20 more seconds best round 12 we've seen in a while on hbo's world championship boxing as Sarisa gets sore on b-side and juan francisco estrada give everything they've got in the closing three minutes of this round. Unbelievable. Estrada did a lot in that 12th, and he won it. Steve Morrow scores it. 117 to 111 to the winner by majority decision. And still, WBC Super Flyweight Champion of the World. Okay guys, that was an entertaining fight, but I have to admit it was by no means a masterclass and I'll tell you why. So when we look at both boxers, let's focus on Soaring Versailles first. Well, we know tactically he fought in a pressure style and wanted to land hard on Estrada. 
Typically with pressure fighters, you see them advancing and forcing the action or either maintaining mid-range distance to force their opponent to engage when they might not want to. As a coach, I would always advise that if boxers are to adopt this style, you must either employ the use of your jab to open up a channel for you to land something of significance or you keep your head moving as you move forward. While moving forward, if your opponent can't pinpoint and target your head, then you may be able to close the distance and throw punches whilst he figures things out. Or if he does throw and misses, you can counter punch well off this with your forward momentum. Now, if we look at Estrada, it was clear that he was the boxer and was trying to move around the ring to reset after successful exchanges. The critique I have for him is that while demonstrating that he could accurately place punches in the early rounds, his movement didn't allow him to counter the committed and aggressive efforts of Soren Vesai. Every now and again, Estrada was moving too far out of range to land his counters and in some instances not holding his feet well enough to catch and counter. I did also notice that the punches that Estrada landed had no real impact on Sorin Vasai, and this could have been due to the extra weight Sorin Vasai was carrying. In pro boxing, you need to be able to slow down and hurt an aggressive fighter and not be in a position where you're made to move for 12 rounds. This comes by making him pay when he misses and maintaining a good constant sense on attacking and counter-attacking while you box. Anyway guys, that's all for now. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please remember to smash the like button if you have enjoyed watching this particular update. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section if you want to add anything about Srisaket Sorong Vasai. So until my next one, peace out.